G'day mates. Today I'm gonna to tell you what I like and what I dislike about the iBreeze Auto CPAP. Let's do it. Welcome to the channel boys and girls and all those in between. My name's Nick, but everyone around here just calls me Uncle Nico. Although I must admit, it sometimes sounds a little creepy. But you know what they say? If the shoe fits. <laughs> now, quick shout out to all my subscribers and also an extra special thanks to all my channel members. I really appreciate your support. And if you'd like to become a channel member, you can do so by clicking the link above and I'll be forever grateful. All right, so just a little bit of background information for you all. The iBreeze here is manufactured by a company called Resvent over in Donald J. Trump's favorite land, China. But here in Australia, it's distributed by an Aussie company called SmartMed. And with me today, I have the SmartMed iBreeze. This one here is the lady version, the female version. You can see it has this lovely rose gold finish for the ladies. They also make a masculine version of the iBreeze. And who knows, one day, if we're lucky, they might also make a trans version. Now that would be a dream, or even better yet, a CPAP that doesn't identify with gender. That is the dream, my friends. And ResMed, if you're watching, start taking some notes. Now the SmartMed iBreeze and also the ResVent iBreeze, they come out of the same factory. They look the same. However, there might be a few little changes in the operating system and I'll try and point them out as we go. I know it's a little confusing, but don't worry guys, I'll walk you through it. Now ResVent, the manufacturer was founded in 2015, so a relatively new company in the industry and the iBreeze was launched one year later in 2016. It certainly puts my mind at ease knowing that ResVent has been manufacturing the iBreeze for over six years now. That's a really long time. It's almost as long as ResMed manufacturing the AirSense 10. I think that's coming up on eight years now, and that's not a bad thing, guys. In the beginning, it's not smooth sailing. There's always hiccups, teething problems, and you can almost guarantee that over that six years, ResVent has been making constant improvements to the quality and the reliability of the iBreeze. The iBreeze is approved by the TGA here in Australia and it also has emergency use authorization by the FDA over in the States. So it does have the tick of approval from those two government agencies. Not that that really counts for much these days. So even though I don't have a vagina, or a pair of boobs, I wish I did. I've got some man boob going at the moment because I've put on a little bit of weight over COVID, but I've been using this SmartMed iBreeze for her, the lady version. Maybe I'm not allowed to say for her because ResMed might uh, trademark the shit out of me, but I've been using this ResMed, fucking ResMed, fucking can't get ResMed out of my mind. I'm gonna blame it on COVID. It's not really because of COVID, it's because I'm lazy, but I've been using this SmartMed iBreeze, the female version for the last seven nights. And now I'll share my thoughts and review. So for size and weight, I've scored it an eight out of 10. It's certainly a very compact design. The dimensions of the iBreeze are 24 centimeters in length, 18 centimeters width, and 13 centimeters height. Weight is 1.35 kilograms or around three pounds. It is worth noting, however, it does have quite a sizey power block. So next up is CPAP comfort features. These are features designed to make the therapy easier and more enjoyable to use. And I scored it an eight out of 10 and was super impressed and perhaps somewhat a little surprised. I certainly didn't expect there to be so many great comfort features in what is essentially a budget device. All right, I'll walk you through them. First on the list is IPR, which stands for Intelligent Pressure Release. And this is gonna reduce the therapy pressure as you exhale as you breathe out, making the therapy easier and more enjoyable to use. But what's really cool about this IPR is it can actually reduce the exhalation pressure below four. Most machines are capped at four as the minimum. This one, I notice, actually goes down to three, which is fantastic because I know from experience that for some people, even a minimum of four centimeters of pressure is still too high. They still feel like they can't exhale. So having that ability to go 25% further down to three is fantastic. It also has ramp and auto ramp functionality to keep the pressure nice and low and comfortable 
when you're first getting into bed and getting off to sleep. And with auto ramp, you can set a pressure that's most comfortable for you and the machine won't start increasing that pressure until you've fallen asleep. Pretty advanced stuff. The iBreeze comes with an integrated heated humidifier. It's gonna add moisture to the air to help alleviate the dryness and congestion caused by all that airflow. And it also has an integrated heated tube system. And that's really gonna help reduce the condensation and rain out and make therapy more comfortable. Now, the humidifier does have a preheat function. So before bed, you can preheat your humidifier and that way when you're ready to start therapy, you're gonna get instant humidification. There's already gonna have humidity added to the air. You're not gonna to have to wait for that humidifier to heat up once you start therapy. And the humidifier also has an auto function. So you can set it on auto, the humidifier will monitor the ambient humidity in the therapy and self-regulate to provide optimal humidification. Pretty advanced stuff. Now, from a few videos I've watched on YouTube of people sort of reviewing and showing the ResVent iBreeze, it didn't look like it had a heated tube system. So I'm not sure over in the States if you get a heated tube included with your iBreeze. In Australia, heated tube kit included. So that might be one of the differences. If it doesn't come with a heated tube over there, you can always get an aftermarket heated tube kit that has its own power supply, like a Hibernite. And that goes with any devices, guys. You can add a heated tube to your device, even if it doesn't come with one. Check out the links in the description. We've also got auto start, auto stop. So you can hop into bed, put your mask on, start breathing. The machine's gonna start the therapy automatically and vice versa, when you're ready to stop therapy, you can take your mask off and the, and the machine will stop. It just saves you searching around for that on off button in the middle of the night. It has a really cool mask fit feature where you can set a pressure and then run a mask fit before you go to bed to make sure that your mask is sealing correctly. And that way you know during the night if that pressure ramps up, your mask seal can handle it. Now as if CPAP machines aren't complicated enough as it is. In Australia, SmartMed have the iBreeze woman and the iBreeze man. And they both came together and made a baby and it looked like this. <laughs> Those of you who follow the channel know my feelings on gender specific CPAP products. I hate it. It's not necessary, it just complicates things and it's just a bunch of marketing BS. But it is what it is. Smart might have the iBreeze for her. I'm not gonna harp and moin about it. That's the one I've been using. Now the, the iBreeze for her has the for him algorithm, but also the for her algorithm. For those of you that don't know, the algorithm is what determines the auto pressure adjustments throughout the night, monitors your breathing, adjusts the pressure automatically. Anyway, it's got this for her algorithm that's a little bit softer, just makes the, the ride a little bit smoother throughout the night, and that's the difference. Now, I don't think in the States with the ResVent iBreeze, there's for him and for her. I think there's just the standard, the standard model there. And so that also might be one of the differences there, and I think it is. You guys are just gonna have your standard auto algorithm, whereas here with the for her, you've got the standard, and then you've also got the for her algorithm. It's hard work, guys, I'm not gonna lie. Like, even for me, getting through all this stuff is pretty hard. So I understand if you're confused, because don't worry, I'm confused too, but it is what it is. We'll get through it together. If you're using the device in CPAP mode, there's a feature called eComp, which I really like. And what Ecomp does is this. Let's just say your doctor prescribes you 12 centimeters of pressure and you're just starting out. If you put Ecomp on, it's gonna reduce that pressure rate by 50% when you're just starting out. So it'll start you out on six, and then each day it's gonna increase that pressure by one centimeter. Really gradually build you into the therapy and gradually bump up, bump up the therapy as you become more compliant. Now, if you're using the device in automatic mode, there's also a feature called R-Care. And R-Care enables you to start your therapy at the 95th percentile pressure levels accumulated in auto mode. Now that sounds really complex, so I'll just break it down for you. 
Basically, we have this value called the 95th percentile. Now with automatic machines, we know that the pressure varies throughout the night, so it changes over time. And with the 95th percentile pressure level, it gives you a guide as to what pressure is required to control 95% of your sleep apnea. Okay, so if we have a 95th percentile pressure of 12, we know that at 12, at a level of 12, we're gonna control 95% of our sleep apnea events. Now, if you're someone who's struggling controlling your apnea, um, you know, let's just say you've got very severe sleep apnea and as soon as you fall asleep, you need a lot of pressure. Now, with an automatic, it's gonna take a bit of time before that pressure ramps up to meet your needs. So with our care, instead of starting down here at four or five, it's gonna start at the 95th percentile, which much, which might be a lot higher for you. And it's really just gonna help lower that apnea hypopnea index because as soon as you fall asleep, um, you're gonna be much closer to where you need to be. I hope that makes sense. I know it's confusing. So let's talk about the user experience, how easy it is to operate and use the iBreeze night after night. And I scored it a seven out of 10. It's got a really nice big 3.5 inch color screen. And it's very easy to navigate through the intuitive menu using that nice big click wheel to review your data and change settings. It's also got the auto on, auto off functionality to easy to start, stop your therapy. It's got the preheat function on the humidifier and also that mask seal test, which I really like. They did lose quite a few points for the humidifier design. Those of you with arthritis or weak hands are gonna find it quite challenging to take in and out the humidifier. Uh, the lid's a little bit clumsy on the top and it's also quite difficult to clean. So you will certainly wanna use distilled water with this device. One thing you should also be aware of is the humidifier tank only holds 280 mils, which is quite a small tank. Most CPAP machine humidifier chambers hold at least 350 plus mils. And even then some people complain that the tank runs dry. If this tank does run dry, it has a smart feature in it which will automatically cut out the heater. In fact, you can't even change the humidifier settings on this device unless there's water in the tank or you take the tank out. So that's a feature in itself, but at the same time, it is a small tank. So if you do live somewhere that is very cold and has dry air, not a lot of humidity in the air, you probably want a machine that has a larger humidifier tank and can provide more humidity throughout the night to compensate for that cold, dry air. That's just something to consider. I'm not a fan of this part of the device. It's the tube adapter that plugs into the back of the device. I can see people losing it, misplacing it. That's gonna be annoying. And I would have preferred if they had to have this, that it had sort of a 90 degree kink here so that the tubing came upwards out of the device, like the AirSense 10, or if it had a bit of swivel movement, that would have been acceptable. The fact that it comes straight out like this, it just, when the tubing comes straight out, it just takes up a lot of room behind the device before the tubing sort of can come up. Same with the AirSense 11. I prefer the tubing to come up and have a bit more of a swivel design like the AirSense 10. So that's a bit annoying. And also the heated tube having this extra little cable here is just a, a little bit messy. And then every time you wanna clean the tube, you sort of gotta take out the cable as well. It's just a little bit messy. It's not a big deal, but just another, another thing that I don't really like. So let's talk noise. And this was a tricky one for me. I've scored it a seven out of 10, but for some of you, it might be more like a 6.5 out of 10. And for others, it might be more like a 7.5 out of 10, and I'll explain. So I'm using a pillow mask, my pressures are around eight centimeters. I've got IPR, which is that intelligent pressure release, the exhalation pressure off. And I think it's very acceptable. I have no problems with it. Uh, a little bit noisier than some of the other machines that I've used, but like I said, certainly acceptable. However, I did do some testing with full face masks, pumping that pressure up quite a bit. And I certainly found it a little bit noisier 
than some of these other machines. Now I do need to point out that I did some pretty thorough research looking at a whole bunch of other real user reviews and on forums and on Facebook groups and there was literally no one talking about the noise factor of the machine. So I don't think it's a big concern. That being said, if you are someone on a high pressure and you are highly sensitive to noise in the middle of the night, you like that dead quiet environment or just with minimal noise, then you might be better off spending a little bit extra and getting a high-end machine and just saving a few decibels there on the noise factor. In the manual of the iBreeze, it states 28 decibels, and they, you know, they have these ISO certifications on the noise. In the ResMed, it's 27 decibels. However, I have a ResMed AirSense 11, and I was able to compare them side by side, do some testing, and I think that there's certainly more than one decibel between the iBreeze and the AirSense 11. Okay, so just, just some things to consider. Cheers. Now, just on the noise, I think it's probably a good idea that I discuss the sound abatement foam used inside the iBreeze. Now, those of you that have just been diagnosed with sleep apnea, the newbies that are just starting out on their CPAP therapy journey, you're in for a rough ride, let me tell you that, because there has just been the biggest CPAP machine recall in history from Philips. And the reason for the recall was because of the sound abatement foam that's used inside the device to reduce the noise. And with the Philips recall, that, sound, that foam was breaking down and causing all sorts of problems. You don't wanna know about it. Bury your head in the sand. Just, just don't buy a Philips device, let me tell you that much. So anyway, I've done quite a fair bit of extensive research to try and work out what's going on with this device because the last thing I wanna do on this channel is give you advice and then find out later that, like I have with Philips, that it's a, it's a train wreck. All right, so with this device here, it actually uses an open cell melamine resin foam from a German company called Bassif, B-A-S-F. And I'll put a link to Bassif in the description below. And I have also read the emission test reports that have been provided to the TGA and the FDA. And I'm no expert in the field, don't get me wrong, but from reading through the test reports, everything seems above board. And I think you guys are good, all right? I'm no expert, but I think you're good. And considering these reports have been provided to the TGA and to the FDA, and this device is still approved, I think we're I think we're in good hands here. All right. Fingers crossed. <laughs> no one really knows. Let's be honest. They really just need to get get rid of this or find some new way to do the sound abatement because the foam I just don't think it's a great idea personally, but it is what it is. All right, guys. Moving on. It's been a long day. Let's talk about reliability, warranty, and repair. Now, I've decided not to give this device a score, and that's just because I'm not super familiar with it. I've used it for seven nights, yes, and I've played around with it, but I don't have a long-standing relationship with it like I do with some of the other devices like the AirSense 10, the Sleep Style, the Dream Station, all these devices that I've known for years, so I've got a lot of experience with them. But I'll tell you what I do know, and that is here in Australia, it's got a two-year warranty. I assume that's the same in the States and abroad, two-year warranty. Here in Australia, you can pay a little bit extra coin and get a five-year warranty, so that's reasonable peace of mind there. I did have a really good look around on all of the forums, read a lot of other reviews. I didn't find a whole lot of negative talk, to be honest. There certainly wasn't a whole bunch of people talking about one specific part that was faulty or was getting error messages. There was none of that. You would assume after six years manufacturing this device that ResVent has ironed out any of those bugs and issues that they might have had in the early years, any of those hiccups. So you imagine they've got it to a point after six years where it is reliable, durable, and people are enjoying the product. And from what I've read online, and I'll share some reviews a bit later on, it certainly looks like everyone is enjoying the product. And I feel that my experience was the same. I, I felt it was an enjoyable product to use for the seven days. Moving on, probably the only little thing that seems 
you know, a little bit cheap and nasty is that humidifier chamber. I don't know how good that little clip is on the side. It has this little bit of a silicon seal that runs around the top as well. It seems a little bit flimsy. But apart from that sort of part of the machine, the rest seems like it's pretty well, pretty well made. I did take it apart like I always do. Had a really good look inside and everything seems to be where it should be. And it looks like it's also easy to repair if there is problems, which is great. It's well put together. All right, now data and connectivity. Now, I gave this an 8 out of 10. It could have almost been a 9 out of 10, to be honest. I was very much impressed with this machine's data capabilities and also how well it's connected. My device that I've been using has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so connecting up to my Wi-Fi at home for the data transfer. But I do hear that overseas as well, some of them are using GPIS, which is your cellular modem. So sending data via the cell towers to servers remotely. And I imagine that's why some of the DMEs are starting to use this as well, because you can monitor the device remotely, like you can the ResMeds, like you can the Philips machines. But having that Wi-Fi is really cool. Super easy to connect to your home Wi-Fi. I downloaded the SmartMed app. That's the app in Australia. There is another app for those overseas. Check out the description of the video if you wanna see the links for the apps. They've got the Resisys platform, which is your cloud-based platform where you can open up a browser, type in the URL, and you get access to full-level CPAP data. Not just your My Air stuff. This is full-level CPAP data that normally only your clinician gets. So it's very cool to be able to open up these platforms. You can generate reports and you have access to that full level data. Same goes on the machine. So in the clinical settings, you can turn switch on full data. You get all your data variables, not just a few of them, not just your AHI, not just your leak rates. You get the whole kit and caboodle, everything you could possibly want on that device. So really, really cool data capabilities. It's got the SD card. So if you don't have Wi-Fi at home, you can take that SD card out. It's gonna store a heap of data. What did I, how many years was, I wrote this down here. 10 years. <laughs> I hope I'm still alive in 10 years. 10 years of high resolution data on the SD card. You can plug that into your computer, upload the data to ResAssist, and then you can generate reports send them off to whoever you like, or just use that data to fine tune your therapy levels. Kick ass. Now, the device also has auto altitude adjustment. If you're going up into the Himalayas, <laughs> wherever you're heading off to, trekking up Mount Everest with your Sherpa and your eye breeze, and you get to the peak, you know your CPAP machine's still gonna be delivering the right pressure. And it also has mass leak pressure compensation. So if you've got a mass that's leaking like a sieve, the machine will know and it will automatically adjust the pressure to accommodate for all the pressure that's leaking out from the mask. But you guys are smarter than that, aren't you? You're gonna make sure that you run that mask test before you go to bed, so you're not gonna have any problems with mask leak at all. You can also get a Bluetooth SBO2 watch that connects to your device via Bluetooth and will show you your blood oxygen levels and also your heart rate. And not only that, it's gonna record those values. So you can see them on the screen, on that nice big 3.5 inch screen, but also it records all that data to the SD card, to the cloud platform. So when you go and generate your reports or you wanna see all that data, it's all there. Next level data, that is some cool shit and that's why I gave it eight out of 10. All right guys, just uh, had a break for a little bit of dinner. Chicken Kiev, if you don't mind. Now, last on the list, value for money. I've given it a seven out of 10. Now, the lack of supply and increased demand caused by the Philips recall, the biggest CPAP recall in history, it might even be the biggest medical device recall in history, to be honest, um, has really pushed those CPAP prices sky high, I've, I've never seen them so high before. They might actually be above retail, I, I'm not sure, but there's some prices out there where you just go, holy, holy moly. Um, now, one year ago, you could have picked up a brand new AirSense 10 auto set by ResMed, top of the line CPAP 
auto CPAP for around that $599 mark US. And, and these days it's double and a bit more than that. And that's if you can find one to buy. Now, if you do want an AirSense 10 auto set, click the link below and you can shop at one of my sponsors um, and get a discount. And you're also helping the channel. But that just gives you an, an idea as to, you know, the price increases. It's been, it's been crazy. Now, currently my US sponsor Sleep Lay has the Resvent iBreeze Auto for $799, which is about as cheap as you will find an automatic CPAP machine these days. And if there wasn't the recall happening, I'd imagine that price would probably be around the $599. It's just that there's just such limited supply and so much demand. Basic Economics 101 that's really driving those prices through the roof. The suppliers, the resellers, just can't get the stock and there's just people crying out for CPAP machines. That's how bad it is at the moment. And my Australian sponsor, my Aussie sponsor, CPAP Direct, g'day guys, the largest independent CPAP provider in Australia, great company, has them for $1,295. And personally, I feel that's perhaps just a little bit pricey. That's why I'm giving them a seven out of 10. And luckily though, if you look in the description below and you wanna pick yourself up an iBreeze, there's a great discount for you, which brings the price down to what I feel is a more acceptable value. So in summary, mates, my week spent with the Lady Smart Med iBreeze was very enjoyable and there's certainly a lot to like about it. Overall, I gave my lady a seven out of 10. Now it's not the quietest CPAP machine on the market and the humidifier is a little small and clumsy. However, for a low cost auto CPAP, it certainly ticks a lot of boxes and I think my review scores reflect that. I did go and read about 40 other reviews from real users regarding the iBreeze and I struggled to find one that was negative. Although I did find one that was a one star review, but if you read it, it reads like a positive. So lots of glowing reviews online. If you wanna check them out, check out the link in the description below. I've put a link to some of the reviews and you can go and read some real user experiences, not just yours truly. Personally, I'm stoked to see a new company like Resvent in the industry and to be honest we really need a whole lot more companies like Resvent providing products and services because the more companies we have in the industry the more competition and the better it's going to be for you guys those costs are going to come down and also it's really going to force those larger players to innovate and they haven't had to innovate in a long time so I'm stoked to have them as part of the industry welcome to the industry guys although looks like you've been in it for a while but Welcome to the big league now, and um, I wish you all the best. So if your DME provider comes up to you and says, oh look, the ResMed machine, yeah, it's on back order for the next three months, but you know, hang around, or hang on, no, we've got the iBreeze here, you can get that straight away. I highly recommend you take them up on that offer. You're not missing out on a whole lot, and in some respects, you're actually getting a whole lot more. And if you're a Philips user, and you're sick and tired of waiting for them to get their act together and you wanna leave that train wreck of a company, which I highly recommend you do, then this is another machine you can certainly take a look at. Over the next few weeks, we'll be taking a closer look at the iBreeze and I'll be doing some advanced tutorials. Taking you through the advanced menu, showing you all the comfort features and how to adjust them properly so you can get the best night's sleep possible. And for the channel members, I'll probably do a live chat so you guys can log on and ask questions in real time, and we can look at the device together and learn together. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to give back, then please consider becoming a channel member. There's lots of extra perks, and I'll certainly make it worth your while. Until next time, guys, good night, sweet dreams, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, bye. All right, special thanks to my channel members. You're all bloody legends, and I'll get some names wrong, I'm sorry. Thelma Richardson, Edith Hager, Lazolo Zazali, Victor Ad...
Durson, Omar Dawood, Dion C, Mitchell Tanner, Mitchie, Denise Norbert, Rachel McLaughlin, Peter Mahan, Matt Lewis, Kath, Kath Bacon, Brady Nelson, Bo, Bo, Ruth B. Runs, Ron B., North Boy, and me great mates, Santa Walker Weather, Andrew Thummer, Craig Heed, Humble Shah, Robert McPhail, Simeon Clerk, WS Chuck, Chucky Boy, Jerry, J Dizzle McNizzle, Ray Boom, oh me mates, my mates, Ray Boom, CJ Sir, Darby O'Toole, Mary O, Barbara Tanner, Warren Hines, Ryan, Ryan, Sharon, Trish, Justin, Greg, Zippy7, Steve O, Hamish, Andrew T, Ryan McDonald, Sean Houston, Anthony Peru, Eric M, Ben Cahill, Katrina Thomas, PC Italian, Papa Smurfs Ticker Shop, Jay, Keith Thompson, Derek, Ricardo, Malcolm, Teresa, Mike, Brenda, Andrew, and our uh, Dustin Z, Kasun, he won the Air Sense 11, Jahun Backers, Stan Lee, Evan, Garfish Man 63, Matthew, Dulosh Page, Robert, Dave Williams, Joe Cannon, Fister Works, Jared McCoon, McKeon, McKeon, Tree Spike, Daniel, Donald, Daniel, Richard, Mike, Jane Hunter, Chris Harrison, Leslie Schultz, Script C, Emma Goldberg, Melody Caruthers, Louisa, Walter Figalo, Jeffrey Carl Poe, Kevin Hilbrunner, Tammy Lenz, Simon Templar, Simo, buy a PC DVD, and Diana Catrit Bates. God bless you all and thank you so much.